YouTube channel. If you've been here before, I hope you have checked out my two previous videos. The first one was just an introduction. The second one was 10 things that I have learned or experienced since having VSG or vertical sleeve gastrectomy. So I'm back with a new video. It's been about two weeks, um, but I'm ready to get into it. So the topic of this video is uh, why did I have weight loss surgery? So if you are interested in seeing my reasons for having weight loss surgery, stay tuned. I'm gonna start off these videos with giving y'all my stats because you know, I think it's important just to know where I've started, where I'm at and like where I'm going. Um, so first and foremost, I started off at 409 pounds. I was weighed um, at my consultation. That was August the 3rd. I started my lower calorie diet on August 6th. I had surgery on December 3rd. I was 380 and then currently I'm 11 weeks post-op and I'm sitting at 338 pounds, which is fantastic. Like I literally have not been this weight in five years. Um, periodically I have utilized my fitness pile. So 2011, I clocked at 344. That was the lowest during that time. And then I clocked at 338 in 2014. So it has been five years since I have been at the weight I'm at right now. And I'm very happy. Um, my goal weight is just snatched. Like I'm not, in my head I say 250 because I kind of know what I look like at 250. I am 5'9". So, you know, and I carry weight. I've always carried weight well, especially in my hip. And booty area so I know the 250 I'm gonna be looking like the snatch beast that I am um, but I, I, I you know like I said it just depends on how snatch I plan on getting once I hit that goal if I want to keep going I'm gonna keep going I'm just do whatever I feel um, is right whatever I look whatever I whatever I like right you know because this is about me you know your journey is about you you need to be the weight that you are comfortable with yes there are certain guidelines or weights you should be at so you don't have these comorbidities which is what we have like sleep apnea high blood pressure diabetes stuff like that you know you want to be as close to that anyway but for my personal satisfaction i feel like 250 220 that's a big difference whatever somewhere up in there um so yeah so anyhow uh as of Monday, I am 11 weeks post. On March 23rd, the most epic event of my entire lifetime is happening, and that is the B2K reunion concert. Now, I don't know how many of you out there were in the era of B2K or was crazy about them, but I was, and me and my best friend who were like ridiculous about them at that time were going to their concert in Nashville on March 23rd. So if you live in Nashville, if you bought tickets and you need to link up with your girl, but um i'd like to be at 318 so i'd like to be down about 20 pounds by the time we go to the concert which is a month and some change um we'll see what happens but i'm happy i mean i'm happy with my progress i'm not trying to compare myself to anyone else i'm not trying to beat some crazy goal my body is mine it's gonna do what it's gonna do you know i'm gonna make mistakes because i am human i touched on that in the last video so if you haven't watched it you know you want to watch it i talk about my fuckery um with snacks and stuff, which I've gotten a whole lot better. And weight is moving again, uh, dropping up off of this body. So that's where we're at. So I would like to be at 318 in about a month, but you know, if I'm not there, if I'm close, I'd be happy with that. Um, so let's get into this real quick. Um, my journey actually really started, I, I would say the wheels were moving in motion when I started going to therapy last April. Um, I was actually in therapy for about six months. Um, I knew that if I was going to embark upon this journey, if I was going to do a weight loss surgery or just any method to really lose weight, that I would have needed to address some underlying issues, some childhood things, some relationship stuff, you know, all the things that contributed to me, you know, having this addiction to food and using that as a coping mechanism and um, just letting myself completely go. And that is exactly what the hell your girl did because you don't get to 409 pounds unless you let yourself all the way go, right? Bitch loves food, you know, I know a lot of people love food, but I love, love food. Um, and I use that as a security blanket. Um, I didn't really know how to cope with emotional distress and traumas. You know, you don't just get taught that shit um, unless you got some parents like that, you know, who know about these things, who are, you know, conscious of how to counsel their kids if they're going through a tough time or whatever the case may be. But um, long story short i got myself into a string of 
dumbass relationship. So it was dumbass relationship after dumbass relationship with fuckboy after fuckboy and it took a complete toll on my mental and emotional health. Um, I would say I was always a thickums and I ain't talking about like just being funny like I was thick. Like I had nice waist, booty hips, like it, I was I was a delicious ass hearty snack, okay? Um, I didn't really gain weight, like get big until after I came back from college. So I went to, to college my freshman year, came back home, dealing with fuckboy number one, and I just kind of lost my mind. And it just kind of proceeded or it, it progressed from there. Um, it probably hit about five years ago, five years ago, 2000, about four years ago when I was like, I'm done. I'm taking myself out of the game. I don't want to date anybody. I don't want nobody to look at me. If I go with my friends and stuff, I don't want nobody looking at me. I want to be in the corner with my drink, minding my business. I don't want attention. And I went from a girl who always loved attention, always loved to be in the middle of the dance floor when we go out to the clubs. Like I really was like, you know, I was hot. And then just all the disappointments in these relationships and not knowing how to deal with that and things from my childhood. Um, I just hid behind food. It became my medicine, it became my drug, and on top of that, I just kind of became a hermit in the house. I'm still a hermit right now because I am going through all this transition. I plan on getting myself out this weekend, but besides the point, um, yeah, so I learned in therapy that I was codependent. And to define codependence, because people don't really know what it means, it's not like I have to have a boyfriend. Codependent is that you seek validation from other people. So you don't believe you're beautiful, you don't believe that you're smart, intelligent, successful, sexy, whatever from yourself. You have to hear that from other people. Other people have to validate you like you're parking. So anyway, as a result of me just kind of retreating and hiding and becoming a hermit, I never got on the scale. So, and it's crazy, right? I was never a person who consistently got on the scale because I don't know what my lowest weight ever was. I can't remember, I don't recall, like, that tells you how much of denial that I moved in. Um, I ignored my growing waistline as long as there was torrid, and y'all know what I'm talking about if you're a big girl. As long as there was torrid and there were clothes I could fit and I could put them on and feel confident and feel like I was sexy and just feel good about myself, I did not think about it. I just honestly, it was out of sight, out of mind, gaining all this weight. I knew that my pants were getting bigger. I was having to adjust to bigger clothes, but I really just, I didn't want to face what I had done to myself. Um, so yeah, I lived in complete and total denial. You know, again, I stopped being social. I just wanted to be invisible. Like if I wasn't, now don't get me wrong, I wasn't looking crazy. Like I was still looking good. My face was still getting beat. I still had good hair, my outfits. Like I still put effort into how I looked and I was holding down a really good job too. Um, I just did not want to be looked at. I didn't want anyone to approach me. Um, I kind of started trying to come out of that shell in 2017, uh, May of 2017. That's when I met the last guy that I dated um, on Match.com because it, you know, these days it's like you got to get online to meet some damn body, and it it ended, um, which was devastating for me because I really cared about him and I was falling in love with him. He was falling in love with me, but we had too many demons that we weren't facing and we weren't telling each other about. Um, and then you know whatever it, it it didn't end bad but he lived like an hour away and we made and pretty much that was an excuse like for me like you live that far and I'm here and then you were gonna move here and now you're not moving here so we're not gonna be together that kind of dumbass shit he tried to come back around which they all do but anybody got time for that um so anyhow my pant size highest was a size 26 um, when I was a senior in high school, I wore a size 18, but again, I didn't have like a lot of stomach back then. Um, so I was sexy at a size 18. And so it was kind of crazy. I think right now I'm between a 20 to a 22. Um, and I'm like, oh my Lord, I've been trying to get back to a size 18 forever. So I'm that close. Um, but yeah, so I just completely gave up on life. I was spending hundreds of dollars on fast food per month. One time me and my coworkers decided to like, let's just see how much we've been spending and it, legitly it was like three hundred dollars a month and i have a son but he's, you know, he's six years old now um but i was spending mad money on fast food every single damn month um so as a result the core comorbidities that i ended up 
getting is high blood pressure and sleep apnea. I've actually had sleep apnea for a very long time. I just never used a CPAP machine and that's like the little machine that gives you um, not even oxygen, but it just delivers air to you so you don't stop breathing in your sleep. Um, I have that now and I'll get into the things that I have been doing to maintain since weight loss surgery. I'll do another video of that next week. Um, but yeah, I have blood pressure, sleep apnea, pain in my back and knees, um, shortness of breath. Um, I think I talked about going to Disney World in one of the previous videos where I just would not get on the roller coasters, even though I had done my research and I knew which ones I could get on and fit. I just didn't want to risk it all. Um, I actually, in August, I started to keep a log on my phone or a notepad of all the things that I'm going to be able to do once I lose weight. I'm going to transfer that thing, print it off, and I think I'll include that in the next video because there's some things I've been actually able to check off, which is amazing. So uh, in a nutshell, um, I gained weight due to failed relationships and not being able to deal with those. and feeling like I was not good enough in those relationships, which is why they didn't last, but really it was just their fuckery. And that's my word of the day, fuckery. Um, and I just didn't know my worth. And after the Disney World trip, I decided that I had to do something. I was tired of living like that. I was tired of everywhere that I went being uncomfortable. Am I gonna fit in that booth? Oh God, looking at a a chair in the movie theater, a seat, am I gonna fit there? Like y'all, it is a prison. Living in a heavy body or a large weight is prison. And I got tired of it. And then I knew that di diabetes also runs in my family and I'm looking at it like, hmm, my child is five years old, about to be six. How many more years am I going to be able to give him? How many more years am I gonna be able to give to myself? I have tried a million and one diets and nothing has worked. I have to do something. I cannot live like I'm ready to like explore, be adventurous and have fun in life. I don't want to just carry this heavy cloud around me because I didn't know how to deal with my emotions or I wasn't taught properly my worth. And I'm not throwing that on my parents, but the truth of the matter is your self-esteem starts with your parents. So if they're not pouring into you and they're not reassuring you and telling you who you are and you know, you're probably going to have a hard time seeing who you are for who you really are. And you're going to make other people be held accountable for how you feel about yourself. Um, I've only been on a plane once when uh, me and my sister, my best friend, we went to Vegas two years ago now. And I remember being deathly afraid of getting on a plane. I remember having a panic attack like the week before we left. Like, what if we can't get into clubs? And what if I can't fit in the plane? Like y'all, who wants to freaking live like that? I just got tired of it. So that's why I chose weight loss surgery because I wanted to have a better, higher quality of life. Didn't have anything to do with a man, a relationship, nothing. Society's, you know, societal norms of how you're supposed to look. It was simply a selfish decision that I wanted to be able to live my life and live it fully. Um, and even what more reiterates that for me is yesterday, a girl that I knew of passed away. Uh, it's probably why I look tired. I've not really had any sleep. I don't know if you are into spirituality, but I am an empath. And so I feel things extremely deeply. Um, I feel people's energies. I feel when people are hurting, it hurts me like they're hurting. And so I met her about four years ago when I did her makeup for a wedding. Um, I used to be a freelance makeup artist and I did her makeup and she was just so encouraging and uplifting and dope and you're amazing. And she really big me up. I really felt like I was that girl. I felt like I was that, that bitch doing makeup. And we connected immediately and we became Facebook friends. I hadn't seen her in like four years. Um, but yesterday, unexpectedly, she passed away. And so it has been taking a huge toll on me. And the last picture I posted up was my before and after. And I will include that. Um, at, I think it's in the beginning of the other video. But anyway, I'm in a gray dress with like a blue um, buttoned up, just like tied up. And she liked that picture. I was looking at it last night and I was like, oh my gosh, she liked the picture. It's just, it's weird because she was just posting, you know, consistently on Facebook like two days before and then she's gone you know and she's got two kids that she's had to leave behind a host of friends and family people that love her you know I everyone loved her she always had such a great spirit and she just kind of became sick most recently nothing to do with weight 
Um, and I don't think they know exactly what happened. I know she had a procedure last week, so it could be complications from that. But anyway, I say all that to say this. Um, it made me hold my son so tight last night. Like I literally just held him for like 10 minutes and just kissed him and told him I loved him. And I explained to him what happened to her and then she went up to heaven. And I don't know why I said this to him, but I was like, you know, I'm always gonna be with you. Whether I'm here, whether I'm in heaven, I'm always gonna be right here in your heart. And I put my hand on his chest to feel his heart beat. And I made him put his hand on my throat to feel my heart beat. And he was like, I feel it, mama. And I was like, this is how you know I'm always gonna be here. And it just really made me feel like, you know, it could be, it could have been me, it could have been anybody. You know, when it's your time, it's your time. Now, being a spiritualist, you understand that your spirits never die. They are always here. You just simply lose your physical human shell, but our spirits are infinite. They're forever. And so that brings me comfort. But while we are here, we really have to love the people that love us and even those that don't. And you have to, what they say, give people their flowers while they're here. Tell them you love them while they're here. I immediately texted my two best friends and told them that I love them. And I was like, you know, when people are here they don't express their feelings enough they don't tell the people they love enough how they feel about them and i was just like i just want y'all to know that i love you all very much and that's it you know and it made me think i gotta take myself to the next level i have to step it up i gotta really take this weight loss serious because i don't want something which that was out of her control but i don't want something that is in my control taking me up out of here before i'm ready you know, when you, whenever you have to go, you got to go, right? I really believe that. But there are certain things that you can control. It's free will. And it's important to just love people while they're here and love your damn self. And so that is what I came from this. I had to love myself enough to risk it all, you know? And surgery ain't no walk in the park. Some people don't make it out of that. But I knew when I was sitting in that waiting room and I seen that cross on the wall and I started reciting Psalms 23, I knew I was gonna make it out of there. And I knew that that would be the turning point where I could change my life forever. And then I knew that I wanted to give back in some kind of way. So I want to thank you all who have subscribed to my channel. I mean, I don't have a lot, but I'm so grateful for the you all that are on here. I will make videos for, just for y'all every day. I don't even care. But I, you know, you just get to a place in your life where it's like, okay, what am I bringing to this world? How am I giving back? How am I changing the world? And if my little videos can help somebody feel better about themselves to make a decision that's going to change their life, that's going to, you know, save themselves, then this is my purpose in this world. So... Again, I want to thank y'all for just watching my videos, for subscribing. I'm going to do better to be more consistent with my content. Um, but you can follow me on Instagram, same name, VSG Roa. I follow back, follow for follow. I think it's important. I can't stand to like be following somebody and they don't follow me back. They're rude. There's an app that I run to see who's going to follow me. So if you follow me and unfollow me, I'm going to find out. Uh, but anyway, uh, I hope that you all have a great week. Stay safe. Walk in love. Send love and light to everybody no matter what because tomorrow is not promised. But we're going to live for today. All right? Y'all have a good one.